love on fire? All aboard! Let's go to church! Check, check, check. How are we all doing tonight? I said, how are we all doing tonight? Amen, amen, amen. Who's the man? Jesus. Come on. Who's the man? Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I am so glad, so glad you're all here. We have some really great stuff we're going to be doing tonight. Um, Dave, could you turn me down just a tad? Okay, thank you, David. Just a little bit. Um, but we have some great things we're doing tonight. Um, I'm going to pray, and then we will take some time after worship, and, and we're going to celebrate the life of Phil Olson. How many remember Phil? Huh? How many remember Phil? Mr. Bongo. He sat on that stage right there for years playing this bongo that I carried all the way back from Africa under my arm for him. All the way back from Africa. <laughs> Um, so let's pray and, and let's get this started. Lord, we just thank you. We give you praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done in all of our lives. We thank you for all the blessings that you just rain down over us, Lord, in, in tough times, in the best of times. You're always there, Lord. You're always guiding our path. Lord, I thank you for tonight, the chance we get to remember Phil. And we'll, we'll get into more, more in that, but you know the love he had for this place and what we do here, Lord. He absolutely loved it. So, Lord, we just lift this night up. We lift the worship up. We pray that it will be a sweet sound to your ears. And, Lord, we, we pray for all that will happen here tonight. We lift this all up to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. All right, Bobby, if you could do me an honor of um, very carefully, with much love and grace, could you bring the drum and place it right over here on the stage for us? I will, absolutely. We're going to play tonight in Missing Man Formation. As I said, I carried this drum all the way back from Africa for Phil. Right like this. We didn't check it on the plane. It went, it, it did not leave my side the whole way. All right, one question left for the rest of you. We got the drum up here, Phil's up here in spirit with us, but I want you to know and want you to answer this simple question. Is there fire in the house tonight? One, two, three, four.
Phil's up there in heaven right now. He is in the biggest party of your lifetime. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing better than being able to trade our sorrows, trade our shame, trade our sickness, and trade our pain. Give it all up in the name of the Lord. Now, don't be shy. If you guys want to get up and dance, get up and dance.
said yes, Lord, a lot. I'm going to start off by just giving a story real quick before we welcome and pray and to give everything again. My first wife, Cindy, who I married back in 1980, and she passed away in 2012, but she had the benefit of being able to come out and sit in the audience at Love on Fire for a number of years. My newest wife, Tutima, we married in 2014, and uh, we've been together to this year will be nine years. She's had the joy of being here at Love on Fire. But as much fun as it is here, and there's a group right back there in the back on those two white tables, right back there, that first white table, that when we went to the mall at Parkway Plaza, I don't think there's too many times that Cindy and myself or Judy and myself went in there that we did not see Phil and his group of friends sitting right there in the food court welcoming people into Parkway Plaza. And I know on many occasions that Phil would be walking right up to him and saying, do you know Jesus? Because that was just Phil, no fear, all right? No fear from him. And I used to enjoy that. He'd see us and he'd tell me everything he'd been doing to evangelize there. And I used to look at him and just kind of shake hands with him and go, Phil, just keep up the good work, brother. Keep up the good work. So that's my story. Welcome, everybody. Love on Fire. We're here tonight to honor Phil Olson. We're here tonight to worship our Lord and Savior, for without him, there would be nothing for us to really be joyful about tonight. But we know that Phil is in a better place. He has no more tears, no more sorrows. Jesus has put him in his lap, wiped away his tears, taken away all his handicaps, taken away all his disease. And at this time, he has a glorious body, and he is up there with those who have gone before him, and they are rejoicing in heaven. And a place that we can all one day be, too, if we have a relationship in Jesus Christ. So tonight, if you're here just celebrating Philip because you were a good friend, but you don't know Jesus, I want you to walk out with a new friend tonight. I want you to ask somebody, who's this Jesus you speak of? Because I want to see Phil again. All right, say hello on my far right to Kelly over here. Right next to Kelly, say hi to Mark. Over here on the far side, say hi to David. Right here on the drum, say hi to Dave. I'll get it to you. Right here to my left, say hi to Chutima. So we're going to pray here, and then we're going to open up with a, another song that's going to be reminiscent of Phil playing on the drums. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight for the day that you have made. And Lord, it says in your word, we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. So we're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. Yeah, there'll be some sorrow. There'll be some tears. We were on this side of heaven. On this side of heaven, we were never guaranteed perfection. We were never guaranteed to be free of trials or tribulations. No, what you did promise us is that you'd walk through all of them with us. And that I know you did with Phil. And so as we worship tonight, Lord, may you just take the music and soften our hearts in a way that when we share about Phil, if there's one thing that we'll remember, besides all the good times and all the joy that he brought to us, that when we walk out of here, we'll remember the one thing that we really shared in common with him. And that was the love of Jesus Christ. And that if we have him, we have everything we need. We just thank you and we praise you for this night. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're going to do a song here that's reminiscent of Phil. It's going to be drum heavy. It's called He Reigns. It's the song of the redeemed 
rising from the African plain. It's a song of the forgiven, drowning out the love on fire rain. The song of Asian believers, filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's people singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. He reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, He reigns. He reigns. Let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Praises echo from the towers of cathedrals, faithful gathered on the ground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. And all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings to her than this. Can you hear it? It's all God's children singing glory. You know that no matter how tough things are on earth, that you're guaranteed something far better in heaven. And every day you are here on earth, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what happens to you because he can turn your mourning into dancing. He's done it to Phil, and he can do it to each one of us. Mourning into dancing.
down just a little bit here. So everybody, what do you think about the New Beginnings Band?
Phil tonight we're gonna to receive an offering so if we can bring our basket out we're gonna pray for that offering we've got a song for that and we got one song to close this out check 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 Does anybody hear me check 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 um, we, we announced it last week that tonight's offering other than, other than one designated um, donation, is tonight's offering is going to what? To go into what? That's right. We're, we're, our goal is to buy 750 Bibles in India. And so that is, that is our, our offering tonight. And next week is going to meet that. I believe that we will meet it tonight. But that is, our, that is our prayer. So, Lord, we just lift up this offering to you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will just bless it. Lord, that you will touch it, that you will touch the hearts here, Lord, to, to be willing to give, Lord. So, Lord, we ask you to just bless it. Bless those that give. Bless everybody here, Father. And, Lord, thank you for giving us such a great team to be such good stewards of it. So, Lord, we pray over this offering. We pray you bless it. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.
only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in God of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? I'll be able to speak it all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When all I will do Lord, you are good. And if I say you are good all the time, and if I say in all the time, okay, you are good and all the time. Lord, you are good and all the time. All right. Yeah, no. 
are good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good, it's so good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are good all the time And all the time you are good You are good all the time What? And all the time you are good You are good all the time And all the time you are good You are good all the time And all the time For the night now let's just take in this man's life and let's worship and give glory to God for everything that he brought through Phil Olson. All right, how do you guys like that worship? Amen. You know, New Beginnings Band has been doing worship with us for like 18 years. A long long time and and every family get together everything we've ever needed they've always always been there for us and we are so grateful for that I mean when we come to church it's the worship that is the key to our heart that's what opens our minds our hearts up breaks off all the stuff that we picked up during the week and opens our heart to be able to hear what God has for us. And we are a Bible-based church. We love teaching what the Bible says and very life applicable. So we, we want to welcome all of you here. If you're here for your first time, please raise your hand. Look around. Right back here, right back here is all members of my family sisters and nieces and nephews and my mom, my dad. Um, so it's extra, extra special treat to have them here with us tonight. I'm very, very blessed. We are excited. We are excited. So excited. I've got one Monday after this and off I go on a journey that only God knows 
what's going to happen. Great things are going to happen. I just know every time when anybody steps out to do something for the Lord, God does big things. <laughs> God does big things. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We don't mind. Um, but we are, we are very excited. Tonight, it's, as I said, my family's here. And those of you that it's your first time here, I want to send an extra special welcome to each one of you. I pray that you are touched. I pray that you leave here tonight and something is a little bit different with your life. But I want us to all look back here. Okay? This is some of my favorite guys on the planet. <laughs> Renato, you guys all remember. You guys remember these guys. Be clapping. We have Renato. We have Steve. We have Jesse. Carl Charles. Phil Trotter. We have Anthony. We have Mark. We have, yes, we do. We got David Dickerson. We've got Chester's here with us. <laughs> Big Vince, I love Vince. If you can, if you can see Vince's smile, it's like his whole face opens up in a smile. It's absolutely wonderful. Michael's with us. My buddy Ruben, Michael, and Dennis. A few of the guys in this group are miracles. <laughs> and everybody, we know Kelly up front. This is how we applaud and sign, right here. Amen. Um, <laughs> guys, I am so blessed and touched that you guys are here. I can't tell you how many times every one of our group, volunteers over and over have been asking when you guys are coming back. And, and... We knew, we knew you would come back, but we just didn't know when. And we are so glad you're here. I pray that tonight opens the door for many more nights. God knows, God's in control, but we are so glad you are here. Amen, amen. So we're going to jump right into things here. Um, Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you will just touch our hearts right now, Lord. Lord, as we celebrate life, we celebrate life abundantly. I pray that you will touch every one of us, Lord. I pray that you will touch our hearts that are scarred. And Lord, we pray that you will just touch this night, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen. You know, as we, as we jump into Phil, I want to acknowledge that we're also celebrating life. We're celebrating the life of my niece, Bonnie, who passed on, went to heaven. We, we are so blessed, and we loved her so much, but we are moving forward. We're all healing, and we're pushing forward. We're moving on. And, you know, when death comes, it, it, people are missed. And they'll always be missed. But they will never be forgotten. Amen? But we move on. Life moves on. And we, we have to do that. We have to move on. <clears throat> but we're going to take some time, about 20 minutes or so. Who knows? tonight to celebrate the life of this guy. Phil, Phil Olson. <laughs> How many of you remember Phil Olson? Huh? 
How many of you remember Phil Olson? Phil Olson was so faithful. Was so faithful. Never a night did he miss. Did he miss? Whether bands liked it or not, Phil Olson was our drummer boy, right? And 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 and, and I'm telling you, he played before I carried his drum all the way from Africa. He played a little set of bongos, but he played them faithfully. Like he played those bongos and. And they were just like little bongos. You could hear like a little set of bongos. They're not really like a drum sound, right? And he, got, and he kept telling me, I'm going to get me a big drum someday. I saw this in Africa, and it was like, that is Phil. So I got it. Like I said, I hand carried this all the way here. Now, we're going to put this right up here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Phil loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. <clears throat> when we started, when we first started our very first Bible study, Jolene was there. Carter Boggs was there. And Phil Olson was there. And about halfway Phil through, Phil didn't quite, didn't quite, know how to how to take it take it in and he was just so quiet and the next week the next week we were doing um a series of of ephesians and we were working up to the armor of god and phil kept asking me pastor bobby hey come on you got to let me wear the armor and we didn't even have any we didn't have any kind of armor so I went to Gypsy Treasure and I got a full Roman outfit. It's all plastic and stuff, but but we girded Phil up in that Roman uniform. <laughs> he thought he was the man. And and it was it was just one of the the hundreds and hundreds of memories. I I spent how many years, Cheryl? Six, seven years, every weekend, every weekend, loading the guys up in the bus and off we would go and we would be touring all over. There wasn't a spot in San Diego for something to see that we didn't hit. And, and we absolutely, absolutely, and Phil was always sat in the front seat. He was the co-pilot. And he was kind of everybody's shepherd. He was the one that kind of herded everybody along. <laughs> oh, Phil, what a, what a beautiful guy I did. I love Phil. I loved him very, very much. So I got a little bit to share about him. And then we'll see where God takes it from there. Phil Olson was born on January 27, 1948 and was a wonderful son and brother of uncle and uncle in his family. He grew into a wonderful friend, a loyal and hardworking volunteer in his community. Phil was always busy doing something. He would walk miles every day, out around Blossom Valley, up and down the street, up and down the hills, he would just, was so, so <coughs> faithful. Honorary uncle to many, many children who he saw grow up and have children of their own. An inspirational leader in his church family as well. How many of you agree to that? To Phil Olson being an inspirational leader for all of us. Always had something, always had something great to say, always had something great to share. 
and he could make that drum sing. Phil was a true member of the Bond family for over 42 years. He was there for every outing, vacation, and camping trip. He traveled to all the western states in Hawaii and loved camping, with the Grand Canyon being his favorite. He was a leader at home and in his community. Phil served as a head of the crazy clowns who <laughs> leaks. <laughs> ah, amen, amen. The Lakeside group for many years and led his group in many, many parades. How many of you here, well, you guys are probably the only ones who remember, but we carried that big giant balloon down the Mother Goose Parade. How many of you remember that? Huh? I still have the big box of all those bright yellow shirts. How many of you remember that? Wasn't that a good time? That was so, so awesome. Say what? <laughs> we should do it again this year. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. He fulfilled his dream of being in the Mother Goose Parade many, many times. Phil loved being a part of things that were happening. He wasn't the kind of guy that wanted to be right up front, right in the mix of things, right? Leading and bossing and everything. But he was a main part of everything. Everything he was involved with. All of our camps, I think, between Love of My Ministries and Love on Fire, we did, if I remember, 17 different camps. And Phil was there for every one of them. Every single one of them. And he just loved it. After we got him the drum, he, cared, he would not go to camp without his drum. <laughs> He loved that drum. Everyone in Lakeside and Blossom Valley knew Phil. He worked with the Lakeside PTAs at school carnivals and fall festivals and bike rodeos. He never missed an Al Cap high school football game. Never missed it. And cheered on all his fave family football players, and cheerleaders. El Cap was basically run by our family. <laughs> Cheerleaders and football. We've got, I mean, it was. It was like, it was from, for, what, 20 years, there was always many groups, cheerleaders, and just on and on and on. And, 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 my son's going to be starting at El Cap, and when we walked on there the other day for his orientation, all of you came into mind. And I saw all of you cheering at games, and yeah, it was amazing. But Phil never missed one, and he loved every bit of it. Phil's nickname at Rios Canyon, <laughs> literally, was Foul Ball Phil. Come on, come on. No, no, let me tell you. Phil was and still and will always be a legend at this baseball field. He would walk every Saturday, rain or shine. I don't think he ever missed a game. If he was sick or if we were camping, that may be one reason why he would miss, but... Man, he would be down there <laughs> I love that. And he, he was like an icon at this little league field. Three, two or three fields there. And he, he was always, always in the middle of whatever was going on there. Foul ball field. Baseball players and coaches knew he would always be there at the field shagging balls and helping the teams out of practices. Like, hours. He spent hours down there. And, and like I said, Phil wasn't the, the out front, all outspoken and, and, you know, 
He was just Phil. He was humble Phil, but he was so faithful. He was so faithful. Always, always sharing that love. All right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. When a team made the playoffs or traveled to a tournament, Phil was always there, traveling with the team, ball players and coaches that remembered him from their childhood knew he'd be there helping out the next generation every practice and every game. Now, you spent hours. Okay. Always be there, share love. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, Sergio. Bye, Sergio. Bye, bye. See you later. Bye, bye. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Love on fire. That's what happens here. When the little league play when the when the little players hit the plate for practice hitting, they would always request that Phil be their pitcher. And he always came through for them with a perfect pitch. Phil loved serving kids. Phil was amazing. He loved the Lord. Phil. <laughs> Phil, it's still here, right? <laughs> okay, baseball's still there. <laughs> I thought you were saying thank you for the baseball. <laughs> Phil was a leader at Love on Fire Ministries and Love on Up Ministries for many years. And every day had a few songs to play. He could always hear when the saints come marching in. Phil had a few choice songs and he would just light up when they would play. He had a few choice songs and he would just light up, but that bongo would scream every Monday. Oh, he played on the orchid. Oh, when the saints really? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You want the mic? Okay. <laughs> I was going to give her the mic to sing the song, but one thing our family is not known for is singing, except one, and that's Leanne Brown. And dad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dad, dad can sing it up. But for the most of us, we're not known for our singing voices. At the end, Phil's friends and family at home relied on him for his leadership. If everyone had a trip to the movies, he was in charge to buy the tickets. When, they, when they'd be at their weekend trips to SeaWorld, the zoo and the safari park, let me tell you, we probably have done a thousand laps around SeaWorld. Right, guys? I mean, we, we had passes, a whole stack of them, and we went almost every weekend. And Carter Boggs isn't here, but I would always somehow talk him sitting up in the front row. Him and Debbie Norton. Uh, oh, no, no, you'll be fine over here. You won't get away. <laughs> but the zoo and the safari park. And guys, we're going to start doing stuff again. When I get back, we'll start doing some weekend stuff. Who knows what, who knows how often, but we will start, we will start doing some stuff.
Disneyland. Oh my gosh. Love Love Em Up, when we had Love Em Up Ministries, we took 72 adults with special needs to Disneyland. 72 of them. Oh, did you miss a trip? Oh, let me tell you, Dave, you would have loved this one. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was amazing. Phil loved it. He loved doing those kind of things. Just being out and around. We go up to the San Diego Glider Park. Phil was in his zone. He would be guiding the guys around where to sit and where to go, where the bathrooms were. He was like, he was working. <laughs> but he loved the glider port. Didn't we have some fun up there, guys? <laughs> Whether he was out of... <laughs> yeah. Phil had everyone organized so no one would get lost and always made sure they were in line for the scariest roller coaster rides. <laughs> oh my gosh. How many times did we go on the scary roller coaster rides, guys? Oh my gosh, Jesse. I'm, I'm going to brand Josh just for a minute here. Jesse, raise your hand, Jesse. Mark, raise your hand. These two guys. Jesse and Mark would never let us pass by the scary roller coasters of SeaWorld. Ever. Ever. We, we, <laughs> we would all be in line, those that I could get to go. It wasn't very many of them. We usually had a group on the ride and a group off the ride. (laughs) Yeah. It was one of you, huh, Gretchen, when you went. Um, But we would would get on that ride, and I I wouldn't be on the ride because I'd have to be out there with the other guys making sure everyone, you know, we never lost anybody. Well, not very often. Maybe a few times we misplaced them. (laughs) But... The ride would be ready, and Mark would be, oh boy, oh boy. Mark, are you going? He'd raise his hand. Who's going on the ride? His hand would go up. Never once would he miss a ride. That was always his hand to shoot right up. <laughs> the ride would take off, come back, and it come to a stop, and Mark would go, am I okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? <laughs> Every time, every time. Am I okay? Am I okay? You're good. <laughs> good but Phil was everyone's cheerleader. Everybody. No matter where we were, no matter what it was, whether it was cheering everybody down the zip line at camp, with the zoo, no matter where it was, at home, he, you know, football ball game parties and all of that, it was Bill Olson was there leading the pack. You know what I mean? Just always had that touch of leading the pack. That's why we're here celebrating Phil. This is not a funeral. It's not, you know, the doom and gloom. There was nothing doom and gloom about Phil Olson. That's why we are celebrating his life. To always be his whole life. That's right, David. That's right. Whether he was out of, out of the, out on the town, at home, or on a trip, Phil was always the jokester. He had a pun. He had a pun in, or a joke about everything. And believe me, whenever we were anywhere hot, the zoo, the safari park. Anywhere where they sold beer, right? We never did. We never got any. But Phil would always come up to me and he'd say, Boy, a nice cold glass of that beer would be good. (laughs) Cheryl, am I right? 
Oh, yeah, good. He never had one. You know, we never did. We never went and, and had a happy hour or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But, but he would always say, boy, uh, one of those big cold ones would sure be good. <laughs> and his eyes big. He was like, he like was talking about the biggest cheeseburger on the planet or something. This wonderful man surely made his mark on the world and made everyone he met a little bit happy. He was always there as a loyal friend to everyone. Everyone. And we will all miss seeking him, kicking back, reading his Bible every single day. Bill Olson was a true disciple for the Lord and will always be greatly missed. Phil loved the Lord, carried his little Bible everywhere. Every trip on the bus, he had his Bible with him. Every single. See? <laughs> Love you guys. Always had his little Bible with him. I had to get him, talk him in. It was like, Pulling thorns, love you. See you later, bro. Le hey, Leanne, how many of you would like to get Leanne down here one night to sing for us? <laughs> There were times when I had to, like literally, talk Phil into being okay with leaving his little Bible on the bus. Because we were out and tramping all of trampling all over the place, and I was afraid he would lose it. So I finally talked him into he would leave it on the bus, but not very often. He was never very happy about it. But Phil, you know, all the weekends we spent, hundreds of weekends, he was always the easygoing, kickback Phil, never having an issue, never being a tattletale, but always letting me know what was going on. Phil was awesome. So we will always remember Phil. Let's pray for Phil and for all of us. We know we can we know where where Phil is. As much as he loved the Lord, we know that he is bouncing around heaven, being part of every activity going on there. Hold on. Guys. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Phil's life. We thank you, Lord, that that we have a chance to celebrate it tonight. Because he was such a big part of what we do here. So, Lord, we thank you for his life. We thank you for all he meant to every single one of us. And I pray that those that have never met him will leave tonight with a sense of the amazing person that he was. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, Phil talked a lot. He loved the passage out of 1 Peter talking about the living hope. He loved the, the whole thought of the living hope and being able to have that all the time. And he would talk about it. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Phil loved that passage. In fact, thinking about it, I'm almost sure he got up here and he preached a couple times. 
speak. And I believe the living hope was one of those things that he preached about and his dad. What Phil's dad was a was a was a preacher, wasn't he, Show? Phil's dad? Yeah. Um, yes, he was. Yes. It was true all those times. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't pulling your leg, it wasn't a trick. But when we talk about that living hope, that living hope is what we have here. As we face whatever comes up against us, whatever we face, whether it's the times of the utmost joy or the saddest of times, we have a hope that we can hold on to. And it's the only real hope that we have. And that's the living hope. No matter what we have going on, Christ is always there for us. Always, always, always there faithfully. Phil loved him. He loved what Jesus was all about. And we're going to get a couple of the guys up here to share their story about Phil. Paul oh, Charles, come on up here. Carl Charles, man. There's a man of God right here. So, I love you guys. Here, Phil. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, me and Phil, we're really good buddies. We talked about everything. Phil liked to clean up around the house all the time. Sweet. Pick up trash. Then we start reading our Bible. I want to miss Phil. He's, he's in my heart. And um, one thing about Phil, and um, at Sea World, we walk around the Sea World, and um, he look for little things to pick up off the ground and throw it away. He's cleaning up around Sea World. <laughs> he clean up around Sea World. And, um, yeah, he pick up little things, throw it in the trash. And um, <laughs> I want to miss Phil. We used to study the Bible together and um, talk together all the time. And conversate all the time, having meetings with, with, with one another, and talking about God, talking about the Bible, talking about what we're going to do tomorrow, when we're going to Sea World, when we're going to church. And he's in my heart. He's in my heart. I'm going to miss him. And, um, he talks about, do I want to go walking with him in, by, by, by the baseball park? By the baseball park. He tells me I don't want to go walking with him by the baseball park. I said, no, I don't want to go walking with him. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they might think something different. We're walking with another, another guy like me, color guy, and we're walking around the, the park. Might be thinking we're doing something. And um, I want to miss him. I want to miss Phil. We always study about the Bible, and we study about John, First John, First John, in the Bible. And um, then we study about Matthew in the Bible, and um. Yeah, Bill's going to be missed. He's in my heart. I'm going to miss him. That's all I have to say. Come on. Come on. Bill and Carl had... <laughs> Bill and Carl had their designated spots that they would sit all the time, side by side, and, and just enjoy each other, huh? Yeah. David Dickerson. Woo! Me 
Mr. D. I sure miss Phil Olson so much, but he sure likes sports a lot on TV. But any time where he wants to uh, go somewhere, he's always at the TV set watching sports, like baseball, football, basketball. And also, he likes stock cars. NASCAR, yeah. Well, I'm going to miss him, so I love him so much in my heart. What's another? Think of another one of your favorite memories. Well, the favorite memory I mentioned is that whenever I tell him something that something goes wrong, he's always there for me. Yeah. He loved you too, David. <laughs> Kelly? Okay. <clears throat> I would like to say thank you to all of you. And for Phil, Phil always had good memories, good messages to tell and to share. He always pray for me to take us together to places, take us home. He always was a good guy. He was cleaning the house, was cleaning everything. And he was always a good man. I would miss him. I'm sad. I would miss him too. Thank you. He wants to pray. And he will continue to pray for, for all of you guys every day, every time. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Does anybody else, we have about 10 minutes, does anybody else have a favorite memory of Phil Olson? Try to? Me, me and Phil buddies and, and uh, including his friend Donald, Donald Ducky, he's a friend of his. We went to the same, same program like where Julie lives. I see you smiling at me, girl. She's looking down on you. I see my two good-looking girls are here tonight. I always love Phil. He's been my friend a long, long time. And me and him have been buddies at helping Ducky with the, the concert. And they're remembering him, too, over there, too. They always love him. And the car show, he loves the car show. That's why he loves that stuff. That's what he does. And he cheers with the Padres. Cheers with wrestling. Cheers for all racing. I saw that last night. They did that for him. And then the Cobalt did it for him, too. And this Sunday, next Sunday is Super Bowl for him. Amen, amen. How many of you remember Super Bowl parties? How many of those did we have? We had a lot of them. I'll bet you guys will be shaking it up next weekend, huh? Say what? Yeah. <laughs> Big, big party. Well, I just want to thank all of you for, for allowing us to have this time tonight to remember our dear brother. You know, Phil was a huge part of all these years that we've been in ministry. Phil was a huge part of this. And that's why it was so important to us to to share, to bring up memories. And for those of you that didn't know Phil, that you will leave and remember. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We just close tonight. We pray your blessing over all of us, Lord. All of us here, we pray that you will just bless our travels home. Lord, that your word will be alive in us. And Lord, we thank you for our friendship and our brother Phil. 
We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Now. So, um, I just wanted to share a poem that uh, I do a lot of memorial services. I did my first one about 25 years ago. And at that time, you know, it was like you, you get through it, you know, and then you do another one, you do another one, you do another one. And you start to see the hope that comes in when you celebrate someone's life. And every one, when you get done with it, there's always someone that walks up and says, that was really, that was the best service I've ever been to. And it's because we're celebrating life. They're all the best. Um, but there's a poem that I always like to share because it gives us an understanding about what dying really is. And, um, you know, they refer to ships as women, you know, from Majesty's fleet. So if you can bear with me, because I'm going to use the pronoun she, because it's a ship, um, instead of he, but it refers to everyone as we take that final walk. And so the poem is from a, re a Reverend Luther F. Beecher, and it's called Gone From My Sight. This is what it says. I'm standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She's an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch her until she hangs like a speck of a white cloud just where the sea and the sky come down to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she goes, and she disappears over the horizon. Gone where, I ask myself. Gone from my sight, that's all. She's just as large in the mast and the hull and the spa as she was when she left my side, and just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, when someone at my side says, there he goes, there are other eyes that are watching from the other shore and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here he comes. For all of us who have lost a loved one, they've gone and they're with all the other ones. Even if they didn't know each other, they do now. And we can always remember that when they leave here, it's our perspective that changes. For they are now with all those that have gone before them. And that's where Phil's at. And to share the story that goes with this, is simply being at an elk cap football game on the last year of my first wife's life. And Phil was there. And it was a very crowded game because Ryan Lindley was the quarterback and they were very good that year. And we had to sit on the visitor side. And Phil was on the other side and he saw us from across the field. And he got up and he walked all the way around the field and came all the way down to the front of the section. Now we were about 12 rows up. Couldn't kids come right on up? But he's waving at the bottom, and he's yelling my name, and I just didn't see him. And finally, the lady sitting next to me goes, I think the guy down there is trying to get your attention. And I look down, and I go, Cindy, it's Phil. And we, get, he's, we go walking on down there, and he looks at us, and he goes, I got seats for you on the other side. <laughs> and I look at Phil, and I go, Phil, why didn't you just come up and tell me? Because he was down there five minutes trying to get my attention. He goes, because I told the guys over there where my seats are at that I was going to come back, and I just wanted to make sure they didn't think I was coming up and sitting with you, and they'd give away the seats. So just come on. And I said, okay. And we all walked out. We walked all the way back around. He took me up. We sat and watched that football game together. And I'm going to tell you, Phil just had that heart of gold. And so just keep in mind that uh, for, for Phil, there's a whole bunch of people that are saying to him, here he comes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I, I can, can hear, hear you. you. This was just totally awesome. You saw the wall and the skin. This is the beginning. Thank you very much. We're so glad that you got to be a part of us tonight. All of you, stick around. We got a lot of cake and stuff coming out. Go back, have a seat, and enjoy your fellowship.
God bless you.